Good day guys, it's Calvin from the Coaching Company in New Zealand. Today we're going to have a real quick chat about um, swapping from the standard Toyota knock sensors, the narrow band single wire knock sensors that Toyota have fitted. And this of course applies to all of the UZ range prior to about 2003 when they went to a two wire knock sensor. So what we do, um, and this applies not to the standard computers, but to the aftermarket computers, both the Haltech and the Link, and depending on which model, because not all of them run knock sensors. Okay, so that will make a difference. And, and why would we run knock sensors? Well, it's really good to have safety, if you are running boost, to have the protection of knock sensors. And ideally you do it and naturally aspirate it as well. Sometimes with budgets, uh, they don't allow to stretch that far, so the likes of the little Haltech 550, or the, uh, some of the Link Atoms, the, they don't have knock sensor capability. They do have a single knock sensor on the monsoons, and then into the, the two-plug um, Haltech range, they have them, and of course there's the Storm and Up in the Link ranges. The advantage of going from a narrow band to a wide band is they work better over a wider range. Uh, so you're going to offer better protection. Standard knock sensors still can work just fine if you want. And we can make up firing looms to suit oh, wait, that's the wrong whatever we want. Okay. So this one has got uh, the, the two single wire knock sensors for the factory knock sensors and then it's got the later model starter plug of course there are two different plugs on the starters the early and the lates I'll do another video on that at some point when I get around to digging all the different kinds of starters out that do all interchange okay so in the case of the job we're doing right here what we've done is we've fitted in some Bosch wideband sensors. Okay, so we've got a stud, nut, and the sensor itself. It'd be really handy if I had one of those studs on my bench right now. So I buy these in quite big numbers. And you can see there, that is the proper stud with the the bigger thread to screw in that matches the thread on the knock sensor. What is that thread? Is it a 12 by 1.25? It's a fine. 12 by 1.25? What do you reckon? These are the same because you see this this one, you take that sensor out and put this one in. Yes. And then the top is a 8125. Let's just see what it is. Twelve by one point two five because it's the same one that goes in the back of the blocks. Talking about ones that go in the back of the block, I got sick of people losing bell housing bolts, so I purchased a few more, fifty of them. So that is yeah, twelve one two five thread, eight one two five thread on top. They screw directly in. And if you're looking for them, that is the part number for them. We then get the nuts. I just use like intake manifold nuts. That is the part number on the 8125 nut. And then it just screws in. Screws in. Torque appropriately. There is probably a proper torque setting. Any idea what the proper torque setting is for a knock sensor, Jase? One I can dug it. Yeah, we would just normally nip them up appropriately. We've kind of been doing it a long time, so you get a good feel for it. The 12 on the 12 on that. And these are the knock sensors that I choose to use most of the time. So that's the Bosch Wideband. There's plenty of options on that um, on different sensors, and most are compatible with aftermarket ECUs um, once you've set them up correctly. I, of course, can supply these parts if I'm doing a wiring loom. I can flick you these parts as, uh, and include them in the package of, of the loom you're getting.
particularly important on the likes of your boosted, supercharged or turbocharged engines. We of course then build the looms to suit. So this one's getting, uh, again, the Bosch style, these are actually a Tyco two pin. Pin one is the signal, pin two is the earth for each of the sensors. We have right hand and left hand marked in there, and of course it's got the late starter on it. Running up to a single four pin DTE, DT plug is our common aftermarket plug that we use for this job. Well I think that's ready to go in. Oh, we're going to shrink it properly, and that can go in so we can test this up. Mm -hmm. And I probably should point out that, of course, we locate them so the plug isn't going to be fouling on intake manifolds or anything like that. That's generally how I do them, sort of sideways or pointing downwards a little bit like that. So that just lays out some options if we're talking to you about aftermarket ECUs and we're building a loom for you, you can make that choice between the standard ones, which of course they do fail every now and again now and are old, or upgrading and putting something newer in, which are quite cheap to replace, and we just build the loom to suit for your aftermarket ECU. Hope that's been helpful, talk to you again soon.